my daddy's burden And he came to be my Near the township of Rangiora lives 17-year-old Pippa Ensor. She is a sixth-generation descendant from one of the earliest Scottish pioneer farmers called John Deans. He came in 1840 to what today is the city of Christchurch, 30 kilometers from here. Well, I shifted from um, down in the cottage that, where I was born yes. when I was about seven, so just over 10 years. Just over 10 years has been your home here. Yeah. And uh, has this been sort of uh, part of the family for, uh, for how long? Oh, for a very long time. My mum's father was the farmer here before us, and that's as far back as it goes, I think. Well, I'm Alistair, Pippa's dad, who you've seen some of, no doubt, already. And I'm trying to call her pet lamb, which is right at the end of the paddock, but uh, not having any luck so far. This is Bob, Pippa's pet sheep. He's, a, he's a, a male sheep, about 10 years old. I'm Janet, I'm Pippa's mother, and I seem to be dishing up dinner tonight here right. with the team. And with looks, what are we going to have? We're having lasagna, which really isn't a proper lasagna, it's kind of a kiwi kind of a lasagna. Janet and I share the, the, the domestic duties or something. Okay, well, we've got that. And uh, what would you call it, a fruit pie or a... A boysenberry pie. Boysenberry pie, right. So ja Janet and I share the domestic duties because we both work. Okay. Well, Janet works more than I do at the moment, so... This book was put out when our family had the 150th commemoration of the arrival of John and his brother William. And here we have some photos of all of us gathered at the reunion. And so this group here is the, um, our direct family uh, descendants group. And um, so therefore Pippa would be sixth. Sixth generation, yes. 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 Tell me, uh, how, how big is the school actually? Um, I think it's about 1,200 students and how growing all the time. <laughs> mm -hmm. What sort of sizes can you, uh, would the classes go up to? Um, the most we'd have is sort of about 30, or a little bit, yeah, 30 mm. would probably be the maximum. You started uh, this school at what age? Um, 13, in Form 3. So where were you before that? Um, I was at a small rural primary school. Oh, it was a big jump from Form 2 to Form 3 um, because of the size of the school. Rangier High School is a big school. Um, and just so many people, and check just the different um, subjects, taking separate subjects in separate rooms and moving from room to room. In each subject we have um, five sub subjects a day, five periods of um, about 50 minutes, and after each subject we move into another room for our next subject. So, okay, yes. Uh, we have different English classes and different um, maths classes, and they're in different sections of the school. Firstly, I'll show you some senior classes. Shawshank Redemption. Yeah. We were given a sheet um, with some questions on it and then we had to write, um, write a little paragraph type thing like that um, on, on those questions and just sort of answer them. And those rays must be parallel. Parallel, so, okay. Yep, so you've got a parallel, you can adjust, you can adjust this, get used to the system, see how that, right? So make certain they're parallel to what you call a principal axis. Oh, you know. And um, make yourself a, a decent sized bit of band, and then just play around. And doing that is like drawing with yeah. materials. What you're doing is you're thinking about what's happening. Mm -hmm. so there's no form time to start with, so always in straight away. Like food. <laughs> Yesterday we're at this YMCA. Which is pretty high, it's like twice as high as this. Okay. So, <laughs> it's quite good. And then, does it get scary up there? Oh, no, nah, it's not too bad. No. I'm, I'm, I'm quite a man, so. so you're quite a man. <laughs> okay. Tell me sort of, you know, what uh, sort of things you sort of focus on when, when you're sort of evaluating them. Um, 
with this we actually focus on them actually being able to complete the climbs yeah. but also other things we look at over the year is their personal and social development so how they sort of respond to each other, you know, communication. The kayaking is part of what sort of programme you've got? Uh, it's a bursary course, so um, <laughs> it's PE. This, what we're doing over here is we've got Amelia and she's learning how to do the Eskimo roll. Okay. And so the teacher's just going to support her to take her through the moves. The idea is to get your head to come up last and that will bring a natural hip rotation through, which will enable you to pop up relatively easily. Down and round, and see how your head watches the paddle as it goes round. Okay. On Wednesday afternoons, all senior classes from all the secondary schools in the region, including Christchurch, have one period of sport. Those who play in the first or second school team in a particular sport play matches against the other schools. The rest play a sport here at the school. Now we look at years 9 and 10. The table, short as the top of the table. It's got legs on it. Whoa, legs look kind of like that. Not like that. Okay? So, when you're doing your concept sketches, make sure they're realistic. Is this a, is it a subject that uh, everyone takes? No. No. You choose it. It's an elective. It's an elective, okay. You know, the avalanche and even the beans, the magic bit, it's probably quite enough for some children. Thunderstorm. And Peter says, What a lovely view. Close the book and down you go. Good, good. Like a beef. Like a beef coop. Oh, it's Okay. Um, mop. Mop. She oh, with two lines. Mop. <laughs> I mean, what's the relationship between uh, New Zealand and Japan? Yes? We have a lot of tourists coming here from Japan and we like to, we can go there and... Okay, we'll try and come down, we'll go up, which is ascending, and then we're going to go down, which is descending. Okay, you ready? One, two, three, four. Now, let your eye travel along this line and you'll find out exactly where that window fits. Part of our school has a farm, so we've based our Year 11 program on the farm. Um, this is my Year 9 agriculture class. We are doing a pasture trial. There are three students in charge of each of the ten small plots and uh, we're basically going to be irrigating monitoring growth, etc. And once the crop is up, we will graze it with our sheep, which you can see some of them in the background there. Yeah. A typical shearer will come into a shed with his gear like this, wearing what I've got on, which is a, a woolen singlet yeah. and jeans. And most important are the footwear, which we call moccasins. The shearer has his own gear. He'll take out a handpiece and then he gets out his comb. Yeah, uh, Handpiece for Hand sharing. Okay. At first, you put the comb on. Yeah. So it goes through the wool easier. Okay. Just tighten it up to hold it in place. Yeah. Not too tight. Then getting the cutter and sticking that on underneath the um, chicken feet. Wow. <laughs> I don't know, it's only about the second time I tried it, so 
Once you get a bit better at you do the whole sheet, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not as easy as it looks. Yeah, you know, trying to hold the sheet down at the same time. Now um, I saw walking around the school that um, there are that you're all wearing uniforms. Can you tell me something about uniforms and why you have uniforms? Um, well, not all of us wear uniforms, but um, from the third form up to the sixth form, we do. Um, as a seventh former, we don't wear uniforms, but um, uniforms are a compulsory thing. Um, Which means we ha we have to wear them. You have, we to, have, wear them. To, okay. have to wear them, okay? Have to wear uniforms. Yeah. Well, um, at the school we have white shirts um, and a jersey, and for the guys, we uh, for the males we have um, pants or shorts with socks. We have to have our socks pulled up. Know, just below the knee socks and the girls have collots or kilts um, so we have to have our shirts tucked in and we're not allowed to wear jewellery. I'm Felicity Morris and I live in Fernside. Yeah, we've known each other for a really long time because we went to the same primary school and we sort of grew up next door to each other sort of. We had farms at the same place. Uh, well apart from sports and things we we go to parties and we go and watch movies and <laughs> go to the film. Go shopping. <laughs> go shopping, yeah. What are the parties like? Do they get rough? Do they, or are they enjoyable? Or what, what, do you, what do you do in your parties? Most of the time there's usually music and stuff and you're dancing. Just talking with people and seeing what they're up to and just generally having a good time. My name is Henry Carr, I'm all the way here from New Zealand and hi to you people over in Denmark. Inari is part Maori. Maoris are Polynesians who, about 1,000 years ago, came to New Zealand from around the island of Tahiti in the South Pacific. This is about the same time as the Vikings. In fact, the Polynesians are often talked about as the Vikings of the South. The Maoris were the only people in New Zealand until the Europeans started coming in the early 1800s. From 1840 onwards, New Zealand became part of Great Britain, and many more came, mostly from the British Isles. Today, about 15% of New Zealanders have Maori descendants, such as Hanari. Up to 40 years ago, it was forbidden to speak Maori in schools, so that eventually the Maori language had almost disappeared in Maori homes. In the last 20 years, Maori is being relearned and is now an official language. Therefore, Henari chose to go to a school which has a department that concentrates on the Maori language and culture and where many lessons are in Māori. Um, yeah, Aranui is a very good place. We have heaps of different Polynesians at the school and heaps of different cultures. As you can see, Brazilians, Chinese, Japanese, name them all. Uh, we're Samoans. Yes. And to say hello is Malo or Talofa. Hinari and his family live in Ashburton, 90 kilometers from Christchurch. Even though there is a state school here, Hinari, as well as his younger brother and sister, all have wanted to go to schools in Christchurch. Therefore, his mother Robin owns and drives a school bus, transporting both her own three children as well as other pupils wishing to go to school in Christchurch. My papa, my dad, he, uh, he's a supervisor at RX Plastics. When I asked Peter why he doesn't speak Māori at home, he answered that... Oh, it's a lot. there's a number of reasons. One is that we weren't, um, we weren't taught Māori at home um, when, I was, when I was young, but, but it was spoken 100% by mum and dad, and uh, so we had to sort of pick it up ourselves from them. Uh, what that, that reason is because um, it was, uh, it was a, a no-no at school and they got, the, got caned or sent home if they spoke Māori in an English school. 
um, because the Europeans are quite strict on English only and um, and why and now these days it's the number one language I suppose uh, mm. English. Yeah. Yeah. My name is Willie Kolf. I am on the right and next to me is my nephew Ben with his mother Joanne and his father Hain who is my brother. Hey, I'm 16 years old I go to the Nelson Boys College it's a single sex school. This is the main street of Nelson where Ben lives. Ben represents the group of New Zealanders whose parents or grandparents immigrated to New Zealand after the Second World War. And he's just been to a karate weekend, a whole weekend, karate training camp, so he's a bit tired, just arrived back. Mm. We're at the Teapot Valley Christian Camp. This is for the annual Sado Karate Camp for 2002. Uh, and we're going to be here from Friday to just tonight and till Sunday morning. Uh, and tonight we've got the dreaded thousand kicks and thousand punches to do. New Zealand secondary schools are based on the original British model and for many years were quite traditional. However, many changes have taken place, particularly in the last 10 years, and many exciting opportunities are offered now. Nelson College is a good example of this. I was at the college on three different days. The first day was unusual because the pupils didn't have to wear uniforms. They pay a kind of fine of one or two dollars, which goes to a good cause. One tradition that still exists in many schools is the assembly. Usually there are one or two per week. The headmaster or principal will often give a special talk or presentation. This time the leader of the Maori students was involved. <laughs> Here is another assembly, some days later. Now the pupils have got their uniforms on. In good old-fashioned style, they must stand up while the principal comes in onto the stage. The principal often wears a gown. Behind him is the school choir to lead a hymn that everyone sings. Or perhaps I should say, are supposed to be singing. From year 11 and upwards, there is a wide range of subjects. One of these is called game and fishing. While I was there, the Year 12 Game and Fishing class were working on a project which was trying to get a stream back to its original state so that fish life would return here. Remember the white bait species? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well we've got some of the adult ones. Yeah, okay. We found them in the stream here. So what's your name? Uh, Troy Adamson. That's right, Troy. Uh, Troy, I was just talking to some of the others about the, uh, this license, uh, fire alarms, fire firearms alarms. license. Yes. Try and tell me a, a bit about what that is. Yeah, well first you have to go to the police and you apply for it and if they reckon you're a fit and proper person then they let you get it. Then you sit a test and you pass a test and then uh, they send it out to you and the firearm license allows you to go and buy a firearm ammunition and take it out hunting and in New Zealand we can hunt deer, chamois, tar, rabbits, possums, whatever really, anything. Um, obviously we're teaching people the skills, Right. so the firearm safety, the hunting, the bush skills, navigation, um, plus also the management side, so we do a lot of uh, diving, snorkel dive, and the boys are involved in drift diving rivers for doing surveys of fish. So what happens is that you're going to put it on and you're going to put your fingers there and you'll look up and then you'll blow into it through your nose and the air that comes from your nose goes up 
and then pushes the water down and out the bottom of the mask. Don't take your mask off. Right. Okay. 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 Don't take your mask off. I was very fascinated by the work a year nine art class were doing. They were making rock traps. A rock trap? Check for rock. Okay. Oh, okay. Just show me. You've got a rock inside there? Yep. Oh, okay. Uh huh. What an interesting idea. Where, where's your rock then? Oh, up there. Sorry, I didn't even see it. Here's my trap from falling down. Okay. Uh huh. Oh. And then, then you have to draw it after, do you? Yes, and you can do everything about it now. Yeah. New Zealand trades a lot with Japan, and many Japanese tourists come to New Zealand. Therefore, there are many young New Zealanders that learn Japanese today. My knee, whatever you call it, or me sitting. After going to school or something, isn't it? Technical drawing and design is also a popular subject. Tell me, what, what are you designing here? Um, it's a can crusher. Ah, uh, can crusher, okay. Hey, it looks fascinating. It's lunchtime, so down to the local shop. Food eaten is not necessarily so different from what many of you eat for your lunch. Junk food is found the world over. What do you got there? Pie. Pie? Yeah, you see, that's the very pie. thing they don't know. They've just got to get a close up of that. You've got to get a close up of the big bottle. They don't know pies in Denmark. It's, it's ice and Coca Cola. It's crushed ice that's flavoured. Oh, okay. Very junky New Zealand food. Yeah. 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 Chips and seafood. And seafood? Yeah, it looks pretty good actually. What, what are they? Mussels and oysters and yeah. octopus? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, see you later. You've got some chips there? Yeah. Yep. Eat, what do you have? Do you have that every day? Um, not usually. Not usually. What do you usually yeah. have then? Oh, uh, maybe a pie. I'm now taking you 500 kilometers south of Nelson, where we meet Ben's cousin. My name's Andrew Colf. I'm um, a landscaper in Christchurch, and I had the opportunity to uh, work on the building and construction and filming of um, Edoras here um, for the filming of the Lord of the Rings and uh, basically I'll just go through what what um, my task was from the beginning. We started here in April 2000 and when we first got here the only thing that was that had been done was that they'd made the roads uh, to the bottom set which is the area over just over there where you can see a bit of light greenery and a few stones sort of sitting around and up a wee bit further that that, that was where the burial mounds were and they were had already been sort of developed a bit and then the um, village and gatehouse was built just above that so there was a road to that and then which is this road that we just came up and there was a bridge that was built um, going straight across here and the bridge back where we went through that wee ford. Yes, and joy was just a thing he was raised on. Love was just a way to live and die. Gold was just a windy Kansas wheat field. And blue was just a Kansas summer. 